most of the time here on the channel we discuss the late game pvp meta in rise of kingdoms but sometimes i get comments from brand new players who actually just need some guidance on what commanders to work on in the early game so that's exactly what we're going to cover in today's video and the information in this video was inspired by one of the best early game players in rise of kingdoms now about two months ago i made a video talking about the sleeper strategy in rise of kingdoms and in that video we took advice from another rise of kingdoms youtuber who goes by the name of the logic bank if you missed that video it'll be in the description but basically the logic bank is a professional when it comes to restarting your game in rise of kingdoms he is like the best min maxer at the very start of a new server and he's completely free to play after that video did pretty well he actually reached out to me about a month ago and said hey i appreciate you shouting out my video thanks for sharing it with your audience why don't you make a video that covers the best early game commander investment guide that he made on the channel so that's what we're going to do today and this video would not be possible if it weren't for him so i'm going to link to his video down in the description below please make sure you go over and subscribe to his channel especially if you're a brand new player and you're free to play and also while you're down there consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the thumbs up button that'll help get this video out into the algorithm and it really helps out the channel a ton and of course before we jump in what's going on guys cheers okay now let's just jump right into this here and the way that the logic bank likes to think about what commanders you should be focusing on when you first start the game day one is you have to break it down into six different categories the six things that you should be focusing on at the start of the game number one killing barbarians number two doing barbarian forts number three gathering resources on the map number four your progression through the expedition levels and number five you're ranking in sunset canyon every week and finally number six is going to be your very first kvk which stands for kingdom versus kingdom if you guys aren't familiar with that and essentially what that means is your entire kingdom everyone on the server is going to be dropped into a map with other servers and you're going to fight it out for the center of the map and that's where all the fun is to be had in rise of kingdoms large open field pvp combat that is your ultimate end goal but it has to start somewhere and the first place you have to start is leveling up your commanders you have to get these commanders to level 60 or as high as you can get them before kvk1 because the higher level of the commander the more stars you can unlock for them and getting more stars means unlocking more skills getting more talent points and the ability to bring a second commander in your army in the open field so step one level up your commanders well great news there are two commanders that are going to help you do that at the very beginning of the game the first one is Boudica she is an epic commander she's a purple commander as you can see here and her second skill gives you 25 percent damage to barbarians and 20 percent more experience from defeating barbarians and the king of experience gain is going to be Lohar his second skill gives you more damage but his third skill gives you 70 percent more experience from defeating barbarians barbarians now Lohar only comes from the special event Lohar's trial which you should have seen at the very beginning of your server and of course Boudica you can get by starting with Great Britain or you'll just get her naturally by opening up the chests in the tavern you can get her from the silver chests or you can get her from the golden chest you can get full summons of her in the gold chests or just a handful of sculptures from the silver chest so using these two commanders and focusing a little bit on these commanders in the early game at least at the very least getting their bonus experience skills maxed is going to help you level up the rest of your commanders that we talk about throughout the entirety of this video if you're looking for a talent build that you should be focusing on in the early game for these peacekeepers then i would say start with the peacekeeping tree because you're going to be able to get a lot of value from your early points here it's going to require less action points to attack barbarians you're going to get more experience here you're also going to get more goodies from the trophy hunter talent and there's going to be a lot of bonus damage that you can get from this talent tree and some healing some march speed and if you do take down forts which we're going to talk about in a minute then you're going to want the mighty force talents the talents over here are going to be the same for Boudica, but she has the skill talent tree and you're also going to go for rejuvenate in the skill tree as well now the second second type of commander that you might want to use for defeating barbarians out in the world and this is for those more advanced players is a commander that is good at chaining barbarians and these commanders have aoe or area of effect damage ethelfled is a free to play legendary commander that you get from the expedition and we'll talk about that in just a second but her active skill is a half circle aoe when she's fighting in the open field and so because she has such a wide aoe damage damage radius.
this what you can do with Ethelfled out in the world is you can be attacking a barbarian here and her aoe damage if you're close enough could trigger another barbarian to attack you for free meaning it won't cost any action points and this is called chaining you basically paying action points to hit one barbarian and you're getting a two for one for that action point spend or if you're lucky if there's a lot of barbarians all together you could get a three for one or a four for one by just going from barbarian to barbarian and getting those kills for free and you can do that with a little bit of skill a little bit of understanding how pulling barbarians together works we're not going to cover that in this video but if you're an advanced player and you are interested in learning that you could look it up on YouTube for that reason you're typically going to want to pair your peacekeeping commanders with an AoE commander that way they can pull in free barbarian kills now we're going to talk about Ethel Flint a lot in this video but it's also worth noting that she is also a peacekeeping commander so she's a great use for killing barbarians out in the world as well and and she gives you bonus experience but the difference with her is she's legendary you can only get some of her sculptures every day so you can't really pick and choose how many sculptures of her you get whereas with the epics that we talked about you can dump all of your universal sculptures into them to get that skill to where you want it to be next let's talk about barbarian forts as a brand new player okay when you start off in the game if you look in the top right corner you'll see the map and I can zoom in and out you're gonna start in one of the outer rings of the map one of those zones and in these zones you're gonna see level one one through three I believe and if you're a brand new free-to-play player you probably should only focus on level one and two forts for the beginning of the game and this is because to take down level three and higher at the very start of the game you're gonna need a decent amount of troops in the army and you also have to be dealing a lot of damage and the best pairing to do that with is Minamoto with Cao Cao and of course if you just started the game you're gonna know that Minamoto is not a free to play legendary commander you actually have to make or you have to spend money to get the this commander okay so at the very beginning of the game leave it to the whales to take down those level three and higher forts but for level one and twos you can stick to the tried and true commanders that we talked about before meaning first of all you can use ethel fled because she has the support tree she has the peacekeeping tree you can do really well here but you could also use Boudica and lohar to do these early level one and two forts as well okay a lot of times players will try to use somebody like belisarius or even a commander like Cao Cao and these commanders you know they have the peacekeeping tree so they are decent here but they have the mobility tree and while that's going to make them move around the map a lot faster they're going to get to that fort a lot faster you're actually at the beginning of the game this makes a big difference because you're missing out on the skill tree or the support tree the skill tree deals a lot of damage the support tree is typically a little bit more tanky in the beginning of the game you're going to need as much damage as you can get to take down these forts I know it kind of sounds silly talking about like needing a lot of damage to take down a level two fort but like when you first start the game it's it's not going to be super easy to do that right so you're going to want to rejuvenate you're going to want burning blood you're going to want tactical mastery and heraldic shield at least plus all the stuff from the peacekeeping tree so just like with barbarians taking on the forts you're going to want those lohar Boudica or Ethel fled especially you're gonna want the mighty force talent over here you're just gonna deal nine percent more damage to that fort which is gonna be really really important also the benefit of using Ethel fled primary for these rallies is her fourth skill gives you more army capacity for that rally it's probably gonna be a while before you max out this skill if you're doing things correctly but it's at least worth noting here now I mentioned the reason that you want to focus on barbarians is to level up your commanders which is true but of course you're gonna get more goodies as well especially these arrows of resistance which you need to upgrade your watchtower you're gonna need to max that building to finally get to the end game and likewise the reason that you want to focus on the forts is because books of covenant this is the only way that you can really get books of covenant in the game there might be a handful of other ways from other pve events and things like that but for the most part a majority of your books of covenant are going to come from doing forts and you're going to need thousands of these to max out your castle okay now why is maxing out your castle so important well first of all you're going to need it in order to get to end game you need that to get your city hall to level 25 you're going to need that to get your tier 5 units in your academy okay so if you thought that you could just rush all the way to the best units in the game that is not the case but the other reason that it's important to focus on forts 
early on in the game is because it's going to help you progress through the expedition we're going to cover expedition in depth but some of these expedition missions have you rally a target city and the amount of troops that you can bring in that rally is going to depend on the size of your castle and so these are really important stages to be able to clear in expedition because these are the stages that are going to give you more of ethel fled and ethel fled is like i said before a free legendary commander and she's going to be very important for what we're going to talk about later in the video for getting the best kills and best performance in kvk1 and so the earlier and farther that you can go in expedition the better your account is going to be for kvk1 like you should be doing expedition as soon as you can in a brand new kingdom and getting that higher castle level is going to help you get more ethel fled sculptures over time okay now while we're here in the expedition let's go over what commanders you should be focusing on in the early game to get that progression right because the, there is a direct correlation between doing barbs doing forts and progressing through expedition and how good you can do in kvk1 okay they're like i know it it might not seem like they're that connected but the sooner you can nail these things the better you're going to perform in kvk1 so this is like the training wheels every five levels you're going to see that it has a purple banner these banners indicate that you're going to be going up against a sort of boss level if you want to call it that this is a level three sun tzu with one star it's kind of cute it's kind of funny but what you want to do for these levels is deal as much single target damage as you can aoe does not matter here and you also want to be able to buff your armies and debuff the enemy army so that's really the commanders that you want to focus on every five level milestones here so what commanders are good to focus on and level up to progress through these big milestone levels well first of all great news ethel Flet has an insanely powerful debuff on her active skill so she's going to be very useful here i do not recommend putting universal legendary commander sculpture into El Cid but if you were lucky enough to unlock him and summon him from a gold key in the tavern then his active skill no matter what level it's at whether you just get it to one or you get it to five it doesn't matter after his active skill is used for the next one second the target cannot launch a basic attack or use their active skills in this single target dps game mode this is going to be really important for you in the early game because you're going to be taking a lot of damage from basic attacks now in the late game that's different 90 percent of the damage you're going to take in the late game is going to be skill damage and aoe damage but in early game basic attacks counter attacks those types of things are going to really hurt you a lot and so to stop them from doing that every skill cycle at least just for a turn is almost like healing because you're going to have more troops as a result of of this one second basically disable plus his second skill just by unlocking it is going to give you a chance to instant proc 500 damage factor which is I mean really nice for the early game also if a target doesn't launch a basic attack that means they don't get rage for that turn which means the boss army is going to fire their active skills a little bit slower just because you have a level one El Cid there in one of your armies also on top of that Boudica can reduce the rage of that target as well so they lose a hundred rage each second for two seconds even if she's not expertise actually it's the same all that changes is the damage factor here so that's really cool definitely use Boudica for those expedition levels she has a lot of single target damage here and she has that really powerful debuff on the active skill very useful for those levels and finally I know this is going to be a little bit of an unpopular take here but you can use a Sunduk in these single target levels as well as a secondary commander because first of all she has single target damage but also she has a rage reduction okay and so between these three commanders Boudica Sunduk and El Cid we are slowing their rage gain from El Cid and reducing the rage that they take that they're getting from Boudica and Sunduk and so their active skills are going to just fire a lot slower and that's going to allow all of your armies to stay alive a bit longer so that way you can deal as much damage to them as possible and just dps them down so far we've talked a lot about Boudica, so it should be no surprise that she is somebody that i'm going to recommend that you work on really you want to get these first two skills to five if you have extra sculptures you can do the first three skills to five but the first two are definitely the most important for the early game you don't need to expertise her right away you're not really going to use her for pvp at any point so so don't worry about that now for pretty much every other main level here with a red banner it's going to be multiple armies that you're going to be fighting and so having an aoe commander or having as many aoe commanders as possible for these stages is going to be very very useful and that's a majority of the stages here so for a majority of expedition what you want is aoe commanders and that's going to be a really common theme throughout the rest of this video okay aoe is super powerful for those expedition levels but it's also super powerful 
powerful in Sunset Canyon, and it's also super powerful in open field PVP and KVK one. So the commanders that you invest in for a majority of the expedition levels are also going to provide you with a lot of value in other areas. Whereas so far we've mainly talked about peacekeepers and really you're never going to be doing any PVP with peacekeeping commanders ethel an exception we'll talk about that later same thing with minamoto but you're you're free to play so you don't have him but Budokan and lohar great to work on at the very beginning of the game but you're not going to pvp with them so let's talk about some commanders that have really nice aoe at the beginning of the game that are also going to help you in other places and we have to start with sun tzu this is a no-brainer this is the best in my opinion pvp epic commander in the game and he's also great in sunset canyon and he is great in expedition he he has a five target fan shaped AOE that when he's expertise, it's going to deal a thousand damage factor to five targets. One of them is a little bit of a dot here, a damage over time, but really it's going to be a thousand damage factor, which is nice. And every troop that you hit with that skill, you're going to get 50 rage, which is super beneficial to popping off your active skills as much as possible. And like I said before, as you get later into the game, a majority of the damage you're going to deal is from your active skills. So you want as much rage as possible. So you want to max out his first skill his third and fourth skills are extremely good as well he also has the infantry tree which is very tanky in the early game and the skill tree which is arguably the best talent tree in the entire game if you're looking for a basically an open field pvp talent tree you're probably going to want to use something like this now this is going to grab feral nature and you're going to get everything in the main parts of the skill tree you can skip out on latent power and naked rage and then you can also come over here and grab strong of body you can grab a bunch of march speed and you can grab a snare of thorns this is for open field pvp but if you want to focus on sunset canyon and also expedition then you're not going to care so much about the march speed and slowdown over here so you could switch it to a talent build like this where you keep the skill tree exactly the same but you come up here and you grab hold the line for the tankiness you grab all of the health and defense over here along the way you're going to get some extra normal damage which is nice but you're also going to grab undying fury for the rage and nine percent more damage to calves and then you'll have one point left over you can either put it in the march speed or you can get half a point of defense over here what are some other great aoe commanders that we can use for expedition well we can use somebody like by bars who has a five target well in the early game it's a three target but it's an aoe very high damage factor aoe 750 when it's at five and when he's expertise it's a thousand which is very very good for an epic commander and the good thing about by bars is you actually can max out his second skill as well which gives him 20 percent cavalry attack which is going to be really really nice for you he also has the skill tree very great epic commander if you're going to be using cavalry and especially of course in sunset canyon and expedition who else is a aoe commander that we can talk about here well we have kusunoki archer skill tree you're seeing a trend here now his damage is a little bit over time so it's not as great as like the instant all the damage but you also have a nice cleanse here which is really good and he gets some nice stats and damage over time on his kit as well now i'm going to show you this talent build for buy bars using my zhang yu because i actually don't have a level 60 buy bars because he's useless to me but trust me these are all the same you're going to get feral nature in the skill tree you're also going to get buckler shield and the reason that you get this for an epic commander in the very early game is because especially in sunset canyon you are going to be taking a lot of counterattack damage relative to the damage that you're taking in other places so again in open field pvp later in the game buckler shield is not a great talent but at the start of the game taking nine percent less counterattack damage is very very impactful also we grab undying fury and unfortunately i would love to take emblazon shield but we don't have enough points to get all the way there because we grabbed buckler shield so we actually go ahead and grab a disarm and then we have two points left over we can get the health here now if you don't want to grab buckler shield and you want to basically future proof your talent build then instead you can come all the way up here just like we did before and you can come up here and grab emblazon shield and then you can come over here and grab undying fury then you have three points left over you put them in halberd and you are good to go your gucci this is a, a talent build that's going to age much better for you but you're going to miss out on buckler shield for the early game now when it comes to kusunoki for archers this is the talent build that i would go with you can see the trend getting feral nature on the skill tree is great you come up here and grab venomous sting for eight percent more skill damage you grab razor sharp for more rage every turn 
and then you have a couple of points left over in the early game i would put three points into rapid fire for more normal damage and then you'll have a few points left over to grab full quiver one extra point you just get a little bit of attack you can put that pretty much wherever they're all going to be the same here and finally another great aoe commander in the early game is mehmed this is another gold key tavern commander that is a legendary i would not recommend putting legendary universal sculptures into mehmed unless you really are like a whale player which if you're watching this probably not but his active skill even when you don't expertise him can deal a nice chunk of damage to up to five targets now it is actually a relatively narrow fan for Mehmed unfortunately but it is still very good damage factor for AoE in the early game and his second skill is exceptionally good 20% attack 20% skill damage you're probably again at the very beginning of the game you'll be just lucky to summon him and if you do just unlocking these first two skills is going to be very very crucial obviously skill locking the first skill you want to max that first so for all the red expedition levels you're going to stack it with all the aoe commanders that i just talked about in this video and for all of the purple expedition levels you're going to stack it with all of the buffing and debuffing commanders that we talked about and then you can fill out the rest of your armies with you know your best single target or just your best commanders in general to flesh out all of your armies and like i said before these attack levels where you're going to rally are going to depend on your castle level and so for these rallies you're probably going to want to use ethel fled primary for these in the early game and then that only leaves leaves one type of mission left and that is the green defense expedition levels and your performance here is going to depend on basically your the strength of your watchtower in your city and also your garrison the garrison commander that you're going to be using for these levels is going to be Sun Tzu we talked about him before and I told you he is one of the best early game commanders in the game for a reason because his second skill has you take seven percent less damage as a city garrison and his third skill is just so tanky in the early game you take 10 percent less damage across the board that's very good on top of the fact that he's got the garrison talent tree and if you want a city garrison talent tree it looks something like this so you would basically grab rejuvenate tactical mastery heraldic shield and then you can come over here and you can grab basically the whole front row of garrison talents and you can grab know thy enemy if you anticipate a swarm which you probably will get swarmed in these expedition levels so that's going to be really nice for you and then of course the first level of the infantry tree is nice because call of the pack gives you defense for all troop types not just infantry which is kind of misleading you also get rage here which is nice you get more normal damage and you deal more damage to calves so basically nothing here is relevant to just infantry and when you're a city garrison you're going to have more than just infantry in your army you're going to have everything in your city which is going to include siege it's going to include archers cavalry everything so that's why you don't go more all in on the infantry tree when you're building a city garrison talent build just like this one so use this build for those defense expedition levels and you will be golden okay now we're going to move on to some sunset canyon and performing well in this game mode should be at the top of your brain as soon as you start in a new server and the reason for this is because if you can get rank one every day you're gonna get way more gold keys than other players in your server and look at how much experience you're gonna get every single day by coming in first place even if you're just in the top five you're gonna get a lot of experience here and these are universal tombs that you can put into any commander whenever you want you can save these up for legendaries or you can put dump them all into your kvk1 commanders that we'll talk about later but these gold keys are really going to be crucial for your early game progression especially as a free-to-play player and every season is seven days long it's one week and so if you can be ranked one at the end of the season then you're going to get even more experience here in the form of tombs and way more gold keys so very important that you are in the top five if you're a really serious free-to-play player so what commanders should you be using in sunset canyon now that we've established how important that it is this is where the logic bank has some crazy good insight and advice that keeps him at number one in sunset canyon for the first few weeks of it coming out which is actually insane now, i'm sure sometimes he's in servers with some whales that kick him out of there but for the most part he's often number one in sunset canyon so if some of these choices look unorthodox to you if you're a seasoned player then i hope you will consider opening your mind a little bit because his justifications for these commanders 
are actually very good and his insight is again this is probably the best restart player that i've ever seen in rise of kingdom so i trust his judgment here and his results don't lie he performs super well so first we have to understand how sunset canyon works and there's a front row and a back row and this will be the same for attacking and defending what you have to understand is that the front row commanders should be more tanky commanders and the back row commanders should be your high dps aoe commanders because you want to protect the so-called glass cannons the commanders that maybe can't take so much damage but they can deal it out you want to make sure that they're not really taking as much damage as possible so who should you have in your front row well if you've been paying attention in this video you'll know that a very good early game tanky commander is sun tzu why literally takes 10 percent less damage across the board and health is the most tanky stat for infantry which is the most tanky troop type so Sun Tzu again best early game epic commander that I can think of almost no question he's basically been in that role the entire time you can do full spearman with him and you can pair him with another AOE commander such as Kusunoki Kusunoki is going to make sure that you have no debuffs on your Sun Tzu so he can deal the maximum amount of damage and you know not have his health and defense reduced by the ethel flood you're probably going to be fighting plus again more AOE damage here is really nice next we're going to talk about Joan of Arc now Joan of Arc we haven't talked about a lot in the video but she's actually insanely broken in Sunset Canyon you can use her with full siege yes you can use her front line as a tanking commander what is she doing first of all if she's expertise it's it's even better if she's not though for two seconds five of your armies get 30 percent health for infantry 30 percent defense for calves 30 percent attack for archers and they get 40 rage per second for two seconds that's 80 total rage that is insane which is expertise it doubles the effectiveness here and gives you more rage an unbelievable buff here she also deals 25 percent more normal damage which I like I said earlier in the early game you're going to be dealing a lot of normal damage and she also has a heal which is very good in Sunset Canyon so the fact that you can use her as a tank here is great because we're going to talk about her later for farming and you get that double value here now who would you pair her with now that we know she is a buffer and a support unit well you can pair her with another buffing and support unit for example you could use somebody like Cleopatra again very unconventional you might not consider this if you're you know if you're used to the end game like me this is not a pairing that you would really think of but the active skill on Cleopatra heals five nearby targets and it gives them a certain amount of defense as well now I don't again I I don't recommend putting universals into her she is a legendary commander you might not even have her in the early game you might not get lucky enough to get her from things but you should be able to get your hands on Cleopatra eventually and this can be a very tanky front row army now why Joan of Arc well because you're going to leverage her talent trees as best as you can in the early game and with her filled with siege you're gonna grab all of the support talent tree you're gonna save one point from cage of thorns we'll talk about why you don't put five points here in just a second but you grab fresh recruits for more troop capacity you also get a bunch of siege defense here when you drop below 50 percent and you gain six percent attack defense and health for siege so 18 percent of stats for that many talent points is wild you also get counter attack that says whenever you heal you gain nine percent attack for three seconds which remember she heals herself she also has healing on Cleopatra so lots of bonus attack here and she has elixir here which gives you even more healing from Cleopatra and from Joan of Arc and you have loose formation to take less skill damage now you have a few extra points left over so we put them into attack we put them into defense and we put them into some attack and defense here and you have four points left over so you might as well put them into cage of thorns because this is an AoE slowdown and eventually when you expertise your ethel fled she actually deals 20 percent more damage to slowed troops so there's actually way more synergy than you think with using Joan of Arc as a tanky march in Sunset Canyon so that is definitely something that you can do now if you want you can move your Cleopatra to another commander we're going to talk about in just a second and you can put your Ethel fled here at the very front of the pack and this is really having her Ethel fled at the very center of your lineup here it's going to be very crucial for having the AoE from her it's a half circle it's 
that's going to hit as many targets as possible by being in the very center here which is very very crucial and again you've got the slowdown on Joan of Arc you've got the healing factor and again this is a big supportive March okay there's lots of debuff value you're going to get from Ethel fled being here there's also the fact that you're going to take 20 percent less counterattack damage because again this is going to be your front line it's probably going to be swarmed so very important stuff there now your third commander here is going to be super unconventional but let me cook it's gonna be city keeper now this is a commander that has been extensively tested by logic bank and in the early game for sunset canyon he pops off boys he's basically a free to play or poor man's richard the first because he's so tanky in sunset canyon in the early game when everybody else is scrambling to figure out how to even get richard you're gonna have city keeper popping off and this would be the other place that you could put your cleopatra as a very tanky sort of off lane march and why does this work why does city keeper work well let me explain here by taking a look at his talent trees as you can see in this video we're leveraging the effects of your talents like crazy here and the reason is that the attack tree while it's not great in the end game in the early game is going to be insane first of all you get effortless which when you get him to five stars you're going to get up to 10 percent bonus damage that's all damage okay you can also grab martial mastery which helps you deal more normal normal damage but you deal less skill damage which is fine you're not going to be dealing any skill damage with him at all anyway you can also get unyielding so you deal more counter attack damage you get burning blood for more rage regeneration and he has the infantry talent tree so you can get more rage from undying fury you can get tankiness from hold the line you can get tankiness from strong of body so this combination here works really well but the secret to city keeper is that he is a green commander and if you guys don't don't know the ability to max out all his skills is going to be super easy in the early game okay you're going to be able to get him all the five you're going to unlock him super fast you also are going to level him up faster than any other commander in the game because green commanders require the least amount of experience to get to level 60. so you're basically getting it's the same talent trees as legendary commanders so you're getting the same value out of the talent trees but it's actually cheaper for you for city keeper because he needs less experience but on top of that it's really important to make sure that you're spending your purple and legendary sculptures effectively in the early game and so city keeper is effectively a free commander you're gonna get to max him super easy for free you're gonna use green stars on him which again at the beginning of the game stars will be a bottleneck your purple and legendary stars will be a bottleneck so the fact that you can get stars on him basically for free without wasting purple or golds on you know a basically a sunset canyon commander city keeper is the most free to play friendly commander that you can possibly use and you get so much value out of his talents it is insane his level and his star level is going to be higher than basically anybody else in sunset canyon because of all those advantages we just talked about everyone's going to be trying to use their richard and it's going to be level 28 level 30 and oh you don't have enough gold stars to get them to four stars so it's going to be a huge struggle for them and even though richard is a better commander in general you're just going to max city keeper so fast that he's just going to have more troops than anybody i'm telling you at the beginning of the game city keeper is the play now his skills nothing crazy right defense health attack and more defense he's pretty tanky you're gonna want to use him in the early game pair him with Cleopatra he's gonna be great in your front line he's gonna be super cheap to get because he uses resources that you don't care about and later when you get something better you could just throw him in the garbage okay so who are you going to put in your back row well like I said this is where the AOE commanders are going to shine this is where we put by bars and we're gonna pair by bars with another AOE commander that we talked about which is Mehmed now again Mehmed is probably not going to be he's not going to have many skills you might have him at one 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 or one 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 zero something like that you might have him at two one zero zero something along those lines but the aoe is i'm telling you that the way it scales is going to be worth it so you put this in your back row and then you're going to do another very unconventional pairing that you probably never would have thought of if you're an end game player but that's going to be tomo with another archer emotep yes emotep we're talking about a blue commander and emotep this is another super supportive army that has many of the benefits of city keepers army for one tomo is a blue commander she's going to take less experience to get to max level than your purples and your legendaries she's going to use blue stars which are 
basically free i mean you won't have to waste the purple and legendary stars on her which means she's probably going to be a higher level and higher star level than anything else that you see in the early game in sunset canyon also she is very supportive here she gets a lot of attack points she has a built-in rage engine 20 rage per second which is nice and she has a really nice debuff here the target tate deals 15 percent less damage for two seconds whenever you use an active skill now emotip if he's not expertise he's gonna make five nearby enemies take 20% more damage for three seconds. That's crazy. And his second skill at five gives you 30% of Archer stats. And guess what guys, all of the benefits that you got from the attack tree on city keeper are also going to be on Tamo. So she's going to get the rage engine. She's going to get the more damage. She's going to take less overall damage. She's going to deal more counter attack damage. This is another commander that doesn't deal skill damage with emotive. So you can deal 6% more normal damage and she has a rage engine on razor sharp you can probably make your way up to phoenix tail arrows since you don't need the skill damage from venomous sting i'm telling you in the first few weeks of a new server you can make really good use out of tomo basically for free and then eventually when you have better uses and better commanders than her you could just throw her away and it's fine she blue commander doesn't matter so the example build would be something like this but you could also change these things up a little bit depending on what commanders you have for example you could remove ethelfled from the front line here and you could put her with by bars in the back row then you could put your Mehmed with your Sun Tzu in the front row especially if you can unlock this fourth skill so you bring more troops that would be really nice and then you could put your Kusunoki with your Joan if you wanted to or maybe you could put the Kusunoki with Tomo behind Tomo you could move the Cleopatra to your Joan of Arc and then City Keeper can get something a little bit more tanky but those are mainly the commanders that you're going to focus on and really what matters the most here is the primary commanders which which is five hours Sun Tzu Joan of Arc City Keeper and Tamo two of these you're only going to be using for Sunset Canyon okay you're not ever going to be PvPing with City Keeper or Tamo I promise you just don't try it it's not going to work also Joan of Arc Prime probably not a great primary for PvP in KVK either so try it out and tell me what you think in the comment section below now we next have to talk about gathering commanders now here's the thing about gathering in the early game and even moving into the late game if you're a serious free-to-play player you should have farm accounts farm accounts are essentially more cities that you have on the map that can go out and farm resources for you and then you can send those resources to your main account I can't emphasize this enough you really should have at least one farm account if not two or three especially in the early game because you are going to run into huge bottlenecks such as needing more stone for your wall your city hall and your tavern and you're gonna eventually need a lot of gold when you get to tier five and also to unlock some of the later techs in the academy and that's where there is a trade-off so if you focus on gathering commanders at the very start of the game you're probably not going to have enough experience to go around to max out your sunset canyon lineup that we just talked about as soon as possible so if you don't have farm accounts your sunset canyon performance is going to be a little bit worse so those experience tombs and gold keys that we talked about you're probably going to get fewer of them but these are all the farming commanders in the game and of course maxing out centurion and the blue commanders is going to be perfect because they're extremely cheap so you definitely want to do that and when i say maxing them out really you only need them to level 37. level 37 is when you can max out superior tools now if you want to take them to 40 and get more stars on them you can grab modified axles so you actually march way faster which i really appreciate but 37 is considered to be like the sweet spot for early game gathering do that for all of your gatherers of course I recommend focusing on Joan of Arc first as the epic because she as you saw in this video can be used in a ton of other different ways second place would be Matilda because her expertise is insanely good when it comes to legendary commanders the best one is Sunduk for gathering same thing the the expertise here is insane second place would be Cleopatra but never ever 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 use legendary commander sculptures on a gathering commander okay just never ever do it and that's pretty much everything for gathering it's very very simple now this entire video has been building up to kvk1 which commanders should you use for kvk1 well consulting with the logic banks advice in his video he's come to basically the same conclusion that i would come to all on my own which is that there's really for free-to-play players two options that you can go with okay the primary number one option is going to be sun tzu primary with ethel fled secondary i think if you want the most bang for your buck the most damage factor in the field this is 
is the way to go you've got two aoe commanders here you've got bonus skill damage on the fourth skill you're going to be a little bit tanky because you're going to be able to take less damage and have more health you're going to be a full infantry army here so you're going to get the benefits of the infantry talent tree from sun tzu plus his skill tree which we talked about before and again these are both five target aoe commanders and ethel is a half circle with a massive debuff she also was a little bit tanky in the early game with the less counterattack damage taken this is the number one best pvp free to play army for kvk1 there's really no doubt in my mind there's one other pairing that you could consider and that would be a cavalry build with belisarius primary and your secondary is going to vary if you got really lucky in the tavern and you got your hands on some tsao tsao then you can unlock you know the first i think three skills for him or four if you have the stars for it probably not but by just unlocking these skills you're going to get a little bit more march speed on the third skill and his active skill is going to be a really nice single target punch and the reason that you do belisarius primary is because belisarius has the mobility talent tree which makes him one of the fastest commanders in the entire game even as an epic commander now his active skill a little bit of a debuff nothing crazy he gets lots of troop defense which is nice he gets 50 percent march speed for 10 seconds when you leave combat which is crazy and you deal 25 percent more damage to troops with less than 50 percent of units remaining so what does this look like when you're actually fighting in pvp well let's take a look at belisarius for a second as i stated before he has the mobility tree which is going to give you a lot of march speed especially hasty departure you get 60 percent march speed when you leave a building a resource point which is wild because you can jump from resource point to resource point but you're also going to get a bunch of extra march speed in here as well you also take nine percent less skill damage and then you can put a lot more points into your cavalry tree now this is basically the fastest talent build that you can go with or belisarius well really it would look something like this now it depends on if you're going to be an aggressor or not if you want the most damage you would go with undying fury if you wanted the fastest aggressive build you would go with equestrian excellence and if you wanted the fastest defensive build you would go with swiftness i'm going to put three points in undying fury and one in swiftness but you can make that decision all on your own also you put one point in the march speed over here just in case you missed that but basically what this does is because you're so early in the game this is probably the fastest thing on the field just hands down all the march speed in the mobility tree plus the march speed on his kit here it's insane basically with Belisarius, you can decide if you want to be in combat or not that is completely within your control and you're a free-to-play player so if you don't want to be in a fight if it is unfavorable for you you just run away okay now the benefit of this army is that you can chase down the weaker armies and you're going to be dealing 25 percent more damage to them which is very impressive now you can pair him with Tao Tao, and that's going to be really nice. If you don't have Tao Tao, then you can pair him with Vibars, another really great free to play commander. Great AOE damage here, which is nice and a really good slowdown on the target to really make sure that you stay connected to them. Very good stuff here, especially when you exit combat here, you're going to gain even more March speed and a healing factor. So if you want to deal massive damage, you would do Sun Tzu primary, Ethel Flood secondary. If you want to play more defensively and you want to be more micromanaging and you want to pick off the weaker players, you would do Belisar full march speed with either Tsao Tsao or by bars and that would be the way to go those are the only two pvp armies that i would consider using for free to play players in kvk1 if you're a low spender which i know this video is not focused on that but if you're a low spender then i would do a 5511 minamoto and i would pair that with Tsao Tsao you can get them from the daily special offer or you can get lucky from the keys that would be Minamoto Tsao Tsao probably the best uh or one of the best early game PvP marches it's also great for doing forts peacekeeping it's really good in the early game just at basically everything okay but again you're not going to have that as free to play so really in the early game you're going to be trying to figure out where the best places to put your purple sculptures are right because us late game players all often forget that purple commanders like it's kind of slow to expertise them in the early game right the best places to put them are going to be obviously Sun Tzu, Joan of Arc, Boudicca, Bybars, Belisarius, Kusunoki, and Emotive. I wouldn't go all in and expertise one commander right away. The reason for that is because eventually you're going to get into KVK1 where you can, you know, reclaim some value from sculptures for expertise commanders. What I would say is right before the fighting in KVK1, that's when you should get an expertise Sun Tzu. Make sure he's expertise before the fighting begins. That is very, very 
very important obviously besides that Joan of Arc very important early game expertise as well but just go through these skills and see okay well you know my next skill up for buy bars for example it's going to get me to finish off this second skill that's where you're going to put those sculptures and really just spread them out to get as many of those early game sunset canyon armies in fighting shape as you can so you can get the most value there and then again once kvk1 comes around max out sun tzu you're good to go that's your one massive dps march and that's gonna be it okay this video was actually way longer than i thought it would be so if you enjoyed it please drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms new players might see it and of course in the description i will have the logic banks youtube channel go ahead subscribe to his channel drop thumbs ups on his videos as well i'm sure he would really appreciate it and consider subscribing to my channel as well and click the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below your thoughts on some of these more unorthodox choices in the forms of city keeper and the forms of tomo i think a lot of you guys probably didn't expect me to talk about these commanders in 2024 but here we are this is great for new players let me know in the comment section below what you think about that and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace